Heparin is one of the most important and commonly used anticoagulant drugs used to prevent the formation of blood clots. Since heparin is used so often in the clinical setting, test writers love asking about it. There's a lot to go over, but don't worry, we've got you covered with our visual mnemonic, so you'll be ready to answer any question about heparin come test day. We've arrived in a house where family is getting ready to celebrate their son's birthday. Everything is going as planned until dad stepped on that hairpin on the floor. Ouch, looks like that one hurt. We're going to use this hairpin to anchor us to the main topic of the scene, heparin. Get it? Since hairpin sounds like heparin. Like hair perin, if you will. After stepping on that heparin, I mean hairpin, dad dropped everything he was carrying in for the birthday. Let's take a closer look to learn more. The first thing I want you to notice is the shiny new trombone that dad bought as a birthday present. When dad stepped on that hairpin, the trombone fell crashing down to the ground, breaking in the process. By the way, this broken trombone should remind you of the enzyme antithrombin. You know, since a trombone sounds like thrombin, a broken trombone should remind you of antithrombin. Heparin works by binding to and activating the enzyme antithrombin 3. As the name implies, antithrombin is an enzyme that inactivates thrombin, also known as factor 2A. Antithrombin also inactivates a host of other clotting factors, most notably factor 10A. You need to remember which clotting factors are targets of heparin for test day. Luckily, we've got separate memory hooks to help you remember them. When dad dropped that trombone as it clattered to the floor, it actually knocked out his two front teeth. Dad always had big buck teeth, and now these two buck teeth have been knocked straight out of his mouth. By the way, these two buck teeth are our symbol for factor 2, or factor tooth, get it? And they are getting knocked out to help you remember that heparin knocks out or decreases the activity of factor 2. Specifically, heparin activates antithrombin, which then goes on to inhibit activated factor 2, also known as factor 2A, or thrombin. Antithrombin obviously works to inhibit thrombin. Pretty simple, right? Just remember our two knocked out teeth to remember that heparin targets factor 2 on test day. Next, check out the other present dad dropped, a tennis racket. Just like the trombone, this tennis racket also broke in the fall. By the way, this tennis racket kind of reminds me of factor 10. Tennis for 10, you feel me? And the fact that this tennis racket is broken is here to help you remember that heparin also inhibits factor 10, or more specifically, its activated form, factor 10A. Heparin does this by activating antithrombin, which, in addition to inactivating thrombin, also inactivates factor 10A. Since both factor 2 and factor 10 are part of the common coagulation cascade needed to form blood clots. It makes sense since both factor 2 and factor 10 are part of the common coagulation cascade needed to form blood clots. It makes sense then that heparin works to inhibit blood clotting, right? Let's go to our next symbol to learn more. Check out that giant red cake splattered to the ground. It looks like dad picked up a delicious red velvet cake for the birthday party. The splattering or breaking up of this gooey red cake should make you think of breaking up blood clots or anticoagulation. Heparin works to break up blood clots and to prevent their formation. Clinically, this makes heparin useful in treating pathologic blood clots such as deep venous thromboemboli, pulmonary emboli, and blood clots in the coronary arteries causing myocardial infarctions. Heparin's widespread use for a variety of clinical indications makes knowing the labs to track heparin's effectiveness also important for test day. And speaking of labs, it seems that dad brought another traditional party food, potato chips. Yep, see the potato chips careening into the air after dad stepped on the hairpin? By the way, the potato and potato chips should make you think of PTT, get it? Since PTT just stands for potato, right? Well, PTT actually stands for partial thromboplastin time, a measure of how fast blood clots in patients taking heparin. And this PTT is usually elevated with heparin use, represented by the potato chips flying up into the air here. We cover PTT in our dedicated scene on the coagulation panel, but for now, just know that PTT measures the effectiveness of the intrinsic and common coagulation cascades. Since heparin works to block factors 2 and 10, the time it takes for blood to clot under these settings is longer, resulting in an elevated PTT. 
Another reason why this is so important is because different coagulation tests are used to monitor different anticoagulant drugs, while warfarin is monitored using prothrombin time, or PT, with just one T. Heparin is monitored to use partial thromboplastin time, or PTT, with two Ts. Some students find this really hard to remember, so just focus on the high-flying potato chips here, and you'll be sure to associate PTT with heparin on test day. Now, let's pivot over to mom here. Since it's natural for some people to laugh at others' accidents, the pregnant mom here is laughing at dad's misfortune. By the way, the happy pregnant mom here should remind you that heparin is safe to use during pregnancy. Unlike warfarin, which has teratogenic effects, heparin is considered safe to use during pregnancy because it doesn't cross the placental barrier. As such, heparin is one of the anticoagulants of choice for pregnant women. Every drug has its side effects, and heparin is no different. Let's focus on dad's bleeding foot here, stabbed by the heparin hairpin. The bleeding here should remind you of the side effect of bleeding seen with heparin use. This should be super obvious, since any anticoagulant also has the potential to cause excessive bleeding at high levels. Dosing of heparin is a balancing act, as we want to give enough heparin so that we can prevent blood clots, but not so much that the patients can bleed out and die from little cuts. This is another reason why we monitor PTT levels to help us find the therapeutic sweet spot in dosing. It wouldn't be a birthday party without plates to eat birthday cake off of. Unfortunately, the plates have also flown out of Dad's hands and are smashing against the door. We're going to use the smashed plates to remind us that patients sometimes develop a low platelet count due to taking heparin. You know, broken plates for broken platelets. And the door? Well... A door is our recurring rhyme for the number four. Putting this together, this picture should help you remember that heparin can cause thrombocytopenia, or low platelets, by way of inducing antiplatelet factor four. This is technically called heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, or HIT, and it is so important for your exam that we're going to take a moment to slow down and unpack what happens here. In patients, heparin binds to a molecule on platelets called platelet factor four, the resulting complex may be recognized as foreign by the immune system, causing it to produce IgG antibodies against the complex. These antibodies then end up activating the platelets, causing a brief hypercoagulable state, where blood forms more clots. After some time, the platelets get all used up, and the pendulum swings to a hypocoagulable state, with excess bleeding and purpura. The initial hypercoagulable state is so dangerous that we actually give other anticoagulants, such as argatroban, to treat it. But that's a topic for our video on the DTIs. For now, just remember the broken plates against the door here to remember heparin-induced thrombocytopenia by way of platelet factor 4. So what can we do when a patient gets too much heparin and is now bleeding out? Well, notice how our birthday boy is getting up to help dad. In typical teenager fashion, he's also wearing his favorite pro-team jersey. By the way, pro-team should remind you of protamine, the reversal agent of heparin. Just like how this kid wearing the pro-team jersey is here to help dad remove the hairpin, protamine sulfate can be administered to inactivate or reverse the effects of heparin. Pro-team for protamine, got it? And that about wraps it up for heparin. Let's do a quick recap before we head out. Heparin is an anticoagulant drug used to prevent blood clotting in a variety of different clinical contexts. Heparin works by activating antithrombin, which then goes on to inhibit several other clotting factors. Namely, the activated forms of factor 2 and 10 are inhibited. This leads to anticoagulation, which is measured and monitored by the elevation of PTT. In contrast to other anticoagulants, heparin is considered to be safe to use during pregnancy. Potential side effects of heparin include excessive bleeding and heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, or HIT. In HIT, antibodies are produced against a heparin platelet factor 4 complex. This activates platelets, causing a prothrombotic state that consumes or uses up all the platelets while reducing platelet counts. Importantly, heparin's effects can be reversed by administering protamine sulfate. And that's it, folks. Let's get out of here before something else goes wrong at this birthday party. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow.
I'll see you next time.